Yeah, mine's too. We're back from executive session. No action was taken. I have change orders for you, and they were emailed out. Yep. I saw them. She keeps on I feel like last year was a lot of change orders, even after January. It was still a bunch of change orders. Coming yeah, I haven't done any kind of comparison. <laughs> Unless January just ruined me. <laughs> Who wants it first? So I wanted to talk to you guys about the base plan. Oh. And how we're in have a 25% budget. Well, let's finish this and we can have the executive session. Happy birthday to you. Oh! Happy birthday. It is. Oh, happy birthday. Thank birthday. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, it's good. <laughs> Yay. Oh, cool. Thank you. That's why he was late. He was baking them. <laughs> he, he slayed through the night. Yeah. I still don't know what's going on. Yeah. I don't know. It was cold as it is today. Why are you I figured you'd already had your little party this morning. No. We're going to party tomorrow. Oh. Oh, okay. oh no. I didn't think about that. I know, right? right? They don't want to party with us. <laughs> yeah, I know. Let's go get conditioners. We can wait till they go. Right. Did you make a motion oh, about that? I made a motion to approve change orders. All right. All opposed? Motion carries. Okay, so yep. Drew had sent me an email that was with Conza wanting to have a letter of support. And so everybody's going for the, the base grant. There's so a lot of money is, out there. Hey, this the is always a, know unless you ask. The letter, and I have the original for you to sign should you do this. Um, Trish had done it, and then I made just a call. Oh, I left you out. Sorry, Trish. I'm like, why do I have so, so many? <laughs> so you can use mine for the original. So. So anyhow, are you going to sign that one? Uh, do you want me to? No. We all read it. Yeah. Well, I didn't know. Yeah, you, um, I think I gave it to him. Um, yeah, whatever. So does this say yeah. for item 22? Or just Junction City? It's for Junction City um, uh, building to provide um, child care and um, more housing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, I can give it to you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay
That's what she's saying, but on the back is what? Yeah. Okay. And then if you like the letter or have the original, if you have changes or whatever, no problem. I'll go ahead and give you the original just in case. You good? Mm -hmm. More money we can get? Okay. And then, Alex, do you know, do you give this to Mickey when she comes in? Yeah, yeah we can. Okay, I don't think so. By the way, I think we need to just if Corey wants to work, we talked about that earlier. Well, but I talked to him. He said he, was, he did. Did he say anything that he was going yeah, to? Yeah, a different grant. Yeah, so, so it's two it. different ones that's coming out. Oh, well, yeah, I'm I sure. Think but yeah, yeah, no, I think if we, if we for especially for the project that we're talking about, we would need the school district and the city to provide letters of support. And uh, probably the chamber as well. So, oh, yeah. oh no, they will. I said I'm sure they would. Oh, they better. I'll go make a copy of this for our files, and then I'll give that to you to give to Nikki. And I don't have anything else unless you go have to do something for me. I think just by consensus. I don't think you need to have motions. I think just your consensus that you know doing those two letters is good. But whatever. There's more. Anything for me? Nope, just don't forget you do this. Oh, thank you. I'll put the angel. <laughs> All right, thank you. Yep. <laughs> oh, and you can share those. Oh, uh -huh. You don't have to. Now, now she's mad you gave it to her. <laughs> oh, he had to share. It's your choice. Not, not it, and for those. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so she takes it into her office after she says you said you could share. <laughs> Is there more? No. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have to read that out. This goes in Corey's box. Three oh six, Mickey's post here. They come, we're supposed to pick this up, we're not too bright, but uh, just call her. Yeah. So, so far, so far, joint meeting, mm -hmm. it has uh, a yeah. order Carter? of coming channel oh, here, so okay. So, hold that of coming to a role in the change. Okay. Or that way I said, here you go. Uh, the oh, no, 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 I, actually, oh, I just want to say. Are you kidding me? No, I'm good. I ate some before I no. came in there. Teresa, <laughs> <laughs> you would have had twenty there dozen. Yeah. There's, a, there's more in a Tupperware container at home. <laughs> yeah, I had to go get several of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh,
<laughs> so I'm gonna do some, I want to do some uh, want to do some lobster. I think I'm gonna make chili tomorrow. Chili would been good today. It would, but I wouldn't. Have it. Want to slip in these minutes real quick? Yep. Yeah. Okay. On the 7th of February, Trish and Alex said they're okay. I had a couple changes for key. <clears throat> um, just some wording changes on when we were talking about uh, CVB and bringing those items back for inventory. And I forgot the word that. And I had in a motion, I said, uh, Commissioner Giordano moved to appoint resolution O T O S. So that was supposed to be approved. And that was it for the seventh. I have a motion to approve the motion. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, all opposed? Motion carried. And on the 14th, I got an A plus from Keith, and the other two didn't see anything either, so I have nothing to go over. A plus. And he read it more than once, trying to find a mistake. I know, I bet he did, too. <laughs> so the 14th. Do I have a motion to approve? Uh, uh, we're we're approved 14 minutes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carried. <laughs> Mr. Asher? Oh. Sun shining? <laughs> yeah, you're right. There's ice yeah, on it. With it. Huh? My nose always runs. His nose always runs. It usually bleeds and then he whines and it's okay, Alex. He's fine. Okay. <laughs> we're ready when you guys are ready. Yep. <clears throat> well, since you put it that way. Tyson, Ms. Giovanni, there's a tree for you, one tree for you, try not to trip over that, Sue's County, one tree for you. I didn't so know you were here, work. I'll just hand that to you, Mickey, that's the letter of support for the things. Oh, thank you so very much. Well, because of the cord, but I was being facetious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody got a kick out of it. Well... Good afternoon. Thank you for the time. It's a pleasure to always come and visit with you guys. I kind of have a list of things to go over with you today. Um, so I will jump right into it. That is if I can get my papers opened up. In front of you, you'll have um, a copy of the prospect report. This is the big one where we track everything. So we track all of our projects um, because projects, just because a year ends doesn't mean project ends. Just because a project goes on either purple or which is on hold or even sometimes red closed does not mean a project ends um, because I've seen them reopen. I've seen them come off hold. And and um, so we have to keep tracking it just for sake of making sure that we don't forget or lose somebody in the process. So just FYI, so far for 22, for 2022, we've had nine new projects and actually we just picked up a tenth today. 
Um, and then we had 46 active that we worked on that are still on the list for um, 2021. So this is just, this has been all updated, all gone back over with the different color coding so you know where it's at at this point. So I just wanted to provide that to all of you. I won't waste any more time unless you see something you have a question on there. What I'd like to kind of do is run down, since this is my first visit for the year, kind of a, what I'd call a year-end cap about what happened this last year or what we've been working on. And then I want to give you some numbers because I know you just love that, right? Mm -hmm. so, um, so for 2021, we worked with and hired a new SBDC, Small Business Development Rep. Her name is Nadia. She's amazing. Um, she's already had, she will be in our office. What is it, Craig? Every other Tuesday? Yep. Yeah. She has office hours with us every other Tuesday, meets with small businesses. She, the other lady that we had was very gracious, very nice, but I have news for you. Natty is going to blow that out of the water. First meeting, first day she was there, she met with three companies. We've already sent two additional companies to her to meet with her because they were falling in between, which she said she's happy to do that, which is great. And she's already talking about exactly what I had been asking before with our SBDC rep, that if she doesn't have all her time filled in a day, she goes out either with Jordan or with myself or whoever and starts visiting with some of our small local companies to see if there's ways to help. So finally, I feel like we're getting the service for that contract that the EDC has that we've wanted. It just took finding the right person. And I have worked with Carl, her boss, on some of that. Um, Craig and I, and, and a big kudos to Kendall um, Schoenrock, are still waiting to hear anything back on the VET home application that we submitted. We're not getting any response at this point. It's just like it's out there floating in limbo. Um, as soon as we hear something, whether it be positive, negative, or whatever, we will let our partners know. Um, we do know that they did finally receive it after a little, little bit of go around there. And we do think it was a good enough proposal that they should give it some serious consideration to review, uh, but we'll see what happens. The Michelin expansion was finished um, for this year so far, and that is, of course, CAMSO slash Michelin. They are over their numbers projected at this point at 126 employees. They're planning on this expansion of another 42, and this is an eight to $10 million expansion for them. So they are doing exactly as we predicted. They're having very good growth, and it's been very positive. Are they um, starting to get people hired? I know they were having some issues. They, they've been hiring, they've only had issues with a, a select few positions, Truth, that are very specific, mm -hmm. um, but they are sitting at about 62, 58 to 62% ex-military employees right now. Um, one of our other companies, which is Eagle Rail Car Services, which was Watco, um, they're at about 66% ex-military. So we have some pretty decent um Burris Manufacturing is at about 42. Uh, Ventria is at about 38. So, I mean, we've got some really good, you know, and that also helps us with um, the next project that I'll mention, which is JMCI. Um, I think you're all familiar with the Junction for Military and Civilian Innovation. Uh, our first five partners were um, Evergy, T-Mobile, P1 Group, which is a large um, pipe construction firm. Uh, supplier, and then J.E. Dunn Corporation, and then K-State Polytechnic, the division out of Salina. So we continue to move forward with them. Um, we have a lot of very large recognizable firms that are coming on board and talking to us. You know, examples might be Burns and Mac, Garmin, Cerner, Textron, Spirit Industries. So tell me a time when this community has had that much attention from that type and those size of companies that are now looking at what we're doing here locally. A shout out to Craig, who, what Craig? Two months, three months ago now. Um, Craig has been addressing and, and talking to soldiers every week on Wednesdays about JMCI. And then about a month ago, JMC Astrum, you hired Mike um, McCorkendale, who's a transitioning out sergeant, right? Uh, Master Sergeant. Master Sergeant. So now he and Craig have been double teaming it to talk to soldiers. So hopefully we're going to cont continue to get some attention that direction. Um, and then we did have a visit from General Funk towards the end of last year in the fall, and he has a sincere interest in our project and has been asked 
uh, to be updated on about a every 90 day basis. And that update will be coming from General Hughes, who is the retired two star general that works for Astrum U, um, who's been working with us and with Mike and with Craig. So that whole project continues to um, move forward and keep going ahead. Uh, we did recruit the company. They purchased the old JC Wire Harness Building. It's almost 80,000 square feet. The firm will be referred to as Fairview Junction LLC here in Junction City. It is a division of or wholly owned by the company J6, which is a vertically integrated agricultural based company. Um, we don't have exact numbers yet. We have some projections, but they are a fast growing firm and they're a very good company to work with so far. Um, we work to secure a spot for our new interchange with the Ike program. So we do, we are in Ike um, and we've been having conversations about the new interchange, which is great for us, more investment to the community, minimum of 15 to $18 million investment on interchange when it does happen. We did hire a new membership director named Jordan McCann uh, in the middle of all of this. And she is just amazing. Um, we're enjoying having her on board. She's hit the ground running really quickly. Um, we have almost completed our audit already for the year, as opposed to in, since Eric went out on their own and started their own firm. Now we're not waiting until November, December to do audits. So we should have it done in the next couple of weeks. So that's good. No, no issues at this time that we see. I attended this last year and or marketed our EDC, Junction City and Geary County Industrial Asset Management Corporation, AUSA with our team that went up to Washington, D.C. with us the Logistics Forum, Site Selectors Guild, um, and other different events across the country. We are still members and working with the Global Site Location Industries Group. It's a marketing campaign. Uh, we are both sides of their organization, their lighthouse and their elite, so we can market at trade shows with them or they market for us. They actually, we just had a meeting this morning, they do a 12 month campaign, email campaign of anywhere between 2,800 to 3,500 companies, nationally, internationally. Um, in December, we got our final for the end of the year report from them. And of that, of those, that amount of companies, we had a 29% open rate, which is amazing. Their usual open rate is 11%. So obviously our copywriter with GSLI is doing a good job for us on those emails. We had 381 companies that we connected with uh, as a result of this directly last year. And of those, we had three or four that actually became, we kind of sent them more information. We continue to follow up with them. They call it a nurturing program. You keep nurturing through that. Um, our website, we continue to work and upgrade that um, over this last year. And we do have a copy editor that writes articles for us on a quarterly, sometimes more often basis. And they're very nice articles. I, I would say we could send them out. We have, you know, other issues or other people. You have the prospect report in front of you. We got support from the Schmidt Family Foundation for AUSA this last year to support EDC and Max trip to AUSA, which was beneficial. Uh, we continued our marketing efforts with Site Selection Magazine in the state of Kansas for their magazine annually. So that's just some highlights of 2021. Um, just going forward, because I thought you all would like to know this, I've included your new CBB director in two of our projects now. Um, she's been invited and we will have meetings. We have one scheduled for two weeks from now and we're still working on rescheduling one that had to get canceled because of a COVID issue in their office. So she's been included in and will be engaged in Project George and Project Patches. So Donna and I have had talks about that. We've, we've brainstormed on Patches. We haven't brainstormed a lot yet on George because there's still some issues that we need to learn about that particular project. So she's been very accommodating, very gracious. She and I enjoy visiting with each other. So I, I'm appreciative of getting to have that partnership. Um, I want to talk a little bit about base grant, but before I do that, I want to give you guys some numbers. Um, I realize y'all like numbers. So I'm going to give you some today. There is absolutely, and I don't mean to pick on you, Mr. Asher, but you asked this one time and I remembered it. There are no denominators in this or no, you know, add on this many because you think it turns over this many times or these are strictly just solid numbers. OK, so I was thinking about this over the last five years and, and people say, well, what are you doing? What is the return on investment to the city and the county for dollars given to the EDC? All right. So I'm going to confess to you, I'm lazy. And you see this, 
right? To dig through and find every little project that's a yellow that, you know, Trish spent $65,000 on this and the EDC helped her for three months. I didn't do that, okay? So these are, these are very conservative numbers. What I did was I picked the five top projects or five big projects over the last five years. Figured five for five, right? So I picked five projects. Over the last five years, the city and the county have contributed to the EDC in funding for our budget $1.4 million, basically. It's like 1.414, so I rounded, okay? So five years, 1.4 million, five projects. The total value of those five projects in five years is $64 million to this community. That is strict numbers, actually probably low because I didn't go back in and look at each one of their pictures, pieces of equipment or something. I took their overall number, right? So 1.4 million that the city and the county have contributed, 64 million out of five projects. If you subtract the 1.4 from the 64 million, because I'm trying to be really fair, most economic development directors wouldn't do that. They just use that number, right? But I decided only to be fair. So I subtracted 1.4 from 64. That gets you 62 million, 585,986 dollars, $96, okay? So let's just say 6.5, 62.5 million. Dollar for dollar, the last five years with only those five projects, no multipliers in, inserted whatsoever, subtracting the 1.4 that you've contributed, you have been returned dollar for dollar, $44.26 for every dollar you've spent. Pretty good return on your investment. On top of that, we've averaged 245 jobs with those five projects at an average of $20 an hour wage, okay? That's 49 new jobs a year average on just those five projects over five years. And that is a payroll of a, an increase in payroll to this county of $50 million over each of those five years. On top of that, we've, we have filled 387,500 square feet of industrial commercial space, either reused or built or added onto, which is an average each year of 77,500 so 77,500 square feet. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't say this. In the first 18 months of this five years, we were spent trying to reorganize the organization, hire critical staff like Craig, and try and keep the organization going, right? That was the first 18 months. Then last two years ago, we had COVID. So we basically have almost three years of that that we've been very distracted. So I can tell you quite honestly, when you look at a return on investment, I think that's pretty fair for your investment in the EDC and the funds that you've put aside for us. So having said that, the other thing I wanted to mention today, I, I said something about this to Trish. I know that the base grant is out there. I know that we have a very short turnaround for it. I have had conversations with Clayton, with Jonathan Clayton, with the Kansas Department of Commerce. Um, he said that the hospital can apply for, for base funding. Of course, you all probably know you can apply for up to 25 million. I would advise against that because on the very first call, there were like 93 people on the first webinar. So everybody's going after it, right? So the more conservative we can be for what we need, the better off we will. They only set aside $100 million. So it's not very much when you consider the whole state. Um, but he did say that hospitals, and I very specifically asked him, what can they go for? If you have deferred maintenance, you can go for anything that relates to construction. If you have deferred maintenance on parking lots, that's fair game. Deferred maintenance on a roof, that's fair game. If you have a boiler issue, which I've heard about in the past, a boiler would be fair game to apply for. If you have HVAC issues, that would be fair game. If you have walls that are not stable or walls that you need to move as a result of COVID because Alex doesn't like working beside Trish and it's going to become a problem and you have to redo the walls and that's construction, that would be fair game as well. We need, walls. <laughs> we need new walls. The caveat to this that he very succinctly said is you have to tie it to an economic development project. You have to make it economically. There's a reason for this. In other words, the hospital needs to have a new roof. It needs to have HVAC and it needs to have new parking lots because we are working on these economic development projects and they're going to need our hospital to be up, running, solid, and ready to serve people. 
So Jonathan is very well aware of the development that we're trying on the west side of town. And so that was his suggestion. Tie it to your growth and your development out west to give it more strength. And then you can have three letters of support, obviously. So its deadline is 11.59 p.m. So not to confuse anybody on the 28th of February. Monday. Monday, 11.59 p.m. Um, and then if you want a letter of support, so I do know there's four entities, if you guys, so there's the hospital, there's aging well, there's our, our application from the city for the west side of town for industrial development, and there's now um, Conva is going after it. So I had a conversation again with Jonathan Clayton, who's kind of the ED, the, the chamber, or the, the commerce rep for looking over all these apps and said, do we dilute ourselves if we have all these applications? That was number one. Do we dilute ourselves if I write a letter of support for every one of them? Because that's what happened. And he said, no, as long as you tie them, you won't necessarily dilute your chances. Just know that everybody else is going after, right? He said, but when it comes to letters of support, he said, Mickey, if you want to write two of them, I would, but find other, other people. Don't, don't have one from you for all four. So like with Konza, I've asked Craig and Jordan to write theirs and sign it as the membership director and the MAC director as opposed to me, because I already wrote one obviously for our project that I'm engaged in. And then LaDonna got to me before anybody else. Now, I do believe that we could figure out a way with our organization, if the, chamber, if the county wants one for the hospital, we could probably do that, or we could help find somebody else to write you. I mean, you only have to have three, right? So that's kind of, if you want to ask questions about base, I'll be happy to answer. I've been in on both of the um, webinars. There is a match, right? So you do have to have a match. And you can use you can use purchase of property as a match, but you won't be doing that for the hospital. So that probably won't work. Mm -hmm. um, so if there's any other questions in regards to that, I'm happy to answer them. I'm happy to answer. I kind of galloped through all of that pretty quickly. Uh, any questions on anything else I gave you? If not, I'll let Craig give you a quick update as well. Okay. Uh, I just want to say thanks for your hard work. Uh, Thank you, I know sir. that you get a lot of slack in our community. I think that's one of the first things I said when I went and had a sit down meeting with you. Well, and I still remember it. I said, Mickey, I've heard nothing good about you. <laughs> I remember me, you telling me that. Tell me what it is that you do. Yep. And you broke it down. It was probably the longest hour of my life. However, <laughs> I was informed. In, in, in all seriousness, uh, I, I do appreciate the work you do for our community. Thank uh, you, sir. That means a lot. And, uh, I, I told you then, I will continue to tell you, wherever you need my help, I'll be there. I appreciate that. I appreciate definitely you. appreciate Thank that, you. sir. Thank you very much. So we'll let Craig tell you a little bit about what he's up to. I told him I was going to take a lot of time because I had a lot of stuff to do over with you today. So I tried to talk about 25 and 5, that we said. 25 to you and 5 for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and he printed stuff out. I was too busy working on base, base grant. You don't get anything other than this because it was already done. <laughs> I know this is quarterly, but this is also, I feel like, kind, kind of year end. end. Annual time. Yeah. This is only the quarterly because I'm still working on my year end one. So I'll email that out probably the next day or two. This also has the first one from this year as well. She is doing well. She is coming along. Do you feel like I'm there? She has to live with Craig, but other than that, she's doing great. <laughs> I pick on him all the time. Do Craig? <laughs> if you want sugar, he's right there. I got sugar. Yep. All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Thanks for uh, allowing me the chance to speak. So on the November, December one, a couple of points I'd like to highlight is uh, we talked about the veterans banners last time. We ended up hanging up 52 this year. And Phyllis and I went and gave a, a certificate of appreciation to the high school. I think you all know that they did a lot of the welding for our brackets. So we want to make sure we keep that partnership going. And I think they plan on supporting us again next year. Um, still working with the Kansas National Guard. Uh, right now, it looks like they are going to do the work this summer for their summer annual AT uh, to fix the trail north of the Republican River. Uh, we have to get a uh, Clean Water Act approval, and that's been done. And so I think that's 
it's about the last piece we're just kind of going through and, and verifying and then last one the first one would be the uh Flint Hills Soccer League Futsal League uh, we had over 120 kids come out this year uh it's more between 25 and 30 of which were Fort Riley kids so just getting more of the uh Fort Riley families out into our community which is always a good thing on uh, the January and February one uh, Mickey already talked about, you know, JMCI has become one of my big focuses, uh, whether it's briefing on Wednesdays uh, and or even getting more involved with uh, the business side with Troy and, and Mickey. Uh, had another meeting with Cloud County about continuing to try and bring the cyber and IT program to our community. I think that's going to continue to be important. Um, it's going to be on hold for a couple of reasons for, on their side. Uh, I will continue to push that. Uh, <coughs> Um, not sure if anybody's heard about this. We're, we've got a group together that's working on an African American trail project. Um, it's been going for about two months now. We have a big meeting coming up this Saturday. Uh, it's, a lot of it's focused on the Buffalo Soldier piece, uh, but just trying. So Kansas has their own trail. Um, we were a part of it initially. Uh, Trunk City got left off, but we decided to kind of pick it back up. We're either going to see if they'll let us in or we'll just do our own thing. Um, so I can brief more on that probably next time. One of the things we did at the JMCI was set up a meeting with Mickey and the Kansas TAG, as well as the, uh, the director of VA Veterans Affairs Commission, uh, in order to try and get both veterans um, and our National Guard as part of JMCI to help us get more data points to help move that the AI engine along a little quicker. Uh, Mickey and I met with uh, CEO. It's creating entrepreneurial opportunities. That's an organization that partners with high schools uh, to kind of get the entrepreneurial mindset into high schools. Um, I followed that up with the meeting last Friday with the principal, of which she seemed very intrigued, her and the uh, uh, CTE coordinator, uh, uh, Mrs. Coy. And so they're working on their calendar right now to see if we can set up a meeting with them and uh, Chris Eggleston, the director of the CEO program. So she, she had already kind of was looking at doing something on the entrepreneurial piece, but they didn't know how they were going to do it. And so it just happened to line up when we were brought in this idea. It's a really cool program, but it's not, Craig and I talk, it's not cheap either. Right. But I think it'd be a great opportunity for yeah. both our high school and our community. And then just the last one on here, you know, Mickey kind of talked about it for her, but we've also had several meetings with Donna at the CVB. And I think there's a lot of good partnerships that are going to be built out of that. Yeah. So pretty excited to have that, have her over there. Um, I don't know if you've, if you've seen the economic impact survey uh, for this year, uh, up 1,400 veterans uh, for the third year in a row, up $40 million to $1.86 billion, and veteran expenditures were up $7 million. So it's the third year in a row that we've gone up in all three of those areas. So depending on any questions, that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you for all the hard work you guys are doing. Thank you, sir. You can stay. I know where to find you. Right. Well, thank you for your time. Sure. We appreciate it. We also appreciate your support. It means a lot to us. So. Just one yeah. I didn't touch on was that we had our first spouse welcome last year. We had our second one today. Oh, how did it go? It went well. Good. So we had a uh, Cloud County was one of our gold sponsors, Twitches, and then Next Home. Oh, nice. So all three did a great job. Being welcoming to the uh, spouses. Uh, eight. I'd yeah, we three. need to get the population of that up. Yeah, had three cancel yesterday due to various reasons. Because it was cold out. <laughs> so, yep. Well, I think one of the things that Craig and I talked about that a little bit yesterday when he was is childcare is kind of an issue with the spouses too. So we may have to look at. We get childcare for next time. Yeah, having Alex babysit or something. Uh, I think you know this is a high school with a lot of uh, qualified teenagers school there. Today. <laughs> they had or didn't have school today. Oh, I said they'd be in school today. They can't watch a kid. Yeah, Alex. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Who's that? You know, oh, yep. Or take him out to the farm, the kids, and let Keith babysit. <laughs> We're at the cabin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He got some calves out there you know that he can play with. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> Thank you. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks, you guys. Have a good day. Right. Uh, well, I, I 
um, would like to have an executive session based on um, some legal issues that I need to ask you guys to help with this in 10 minutes. Legal matters? Yeah. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Motion carries.